All right, guys. We're going to talk about using mean absolute deviation to determine outliers. This is another way. We talked about box plots and the idea of interquartile range, which is, in some sense, another measure of spread. So we're going to use the idea of mean absolute deviation to determine outliers. Now, in some sense, it's... Um, it's mostly true, not always true, but it's most of the time is true, that 95% of data in any data set is between, is within two and a half mean absolute deviations or MADs of the mean. So if we know we have a data set that has a mean of let's say 10 and a mean absolute deviation or MAD of 2, then 95% of our data between So it's going to be at the lowest, 10 minus 2.5 times 2. And at the highest, it's going to be 10 plus 2.5 times 2. So that means you can check it's within... the range 5 to 15, if you just do that little calculation. So, we're going to use that idea for an outlier. So, for outliers, we're going to say anything So anything more extreme than 2.5 mean absolute deviations from our mean. So that's how we're going to define an outlier. In the set that we just um, saw, or at least we saw the mean and the mat of it, any number that's smaller than 5 or bigger than 15, we're going to call an outlier. So let's do an example and see how this looks. So let's say I'm interested in recording the number of pairs of pants people own. And let's say I ask 6 people and I get the following data set. I get 1 person has 8 pairs, 9 pairs, another person third person has 13 pairs, somebody has 7 pairs, somebody has only 1 pair, and somebody has 10 pairs. Now you can check that the mean is just going to be the sum of these guys, so 8 plus 9 plus 13 plus 7 plus 1 plus 10 over 6, and if you add up the top, you can see that this is going to be 48 over 6, which simplifies, of course, in 6, 8 to 48, this is 8. All right. Now we can use that mean to calculate, so I'll write it here that the mean was 8, so we can calculate the mean absolute deviation. So what that's going to be is going to be the distance, the average distance from every point to the mean. We don't care about the sign. We don't care if it's a negative distance or a positive distance. So we're going to take the absolute value. We just care about how far it is. So it's going to be 
Uh, let's do it in order, I guess. So 1 minus your mean of ace plus 7 minus ace. Take the absolute value. Plus 8 minus ace. Plus 9 minus ace. Plus 10 minus ace. Plus 13 minus ace. And we're going to divide all that by the number of data points we have, which is 6. So it simplifies to 7 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5 over 6, which is 16 over 6. Or if you want it simplified in a, um, oh, let's do a mixed fraction, why not? So it's going to be 2 and 2 thirds. Or if you like, as an improper fraction, 8 thirds. Any of those is good. So there is our mean absolute deviation. Now to figure out if any of these points are outliers, well, all we have to do is we have to calculate what 2.5 mean absolute deviations below the mean are, and what 2.5 mean absolute deviations above the mean are, and then see if any of our data points are past those. So let's look at x bar plus 2.5 mads. So that's going to be, our mean was ace. Now we're going to multiply. I'm going to change this to fractions just to make everything easy. So 2.5 is 5 over 2. And let's use an improper fraction. We know um, our mean absolute deviation is 8 thirds. So this comes down to, well, that's going to cancel there, which turns that to a 4. So this is going to be ace plus 20. Oh, let's make that more like a 20. 8 plus 20 thirds. Or if you like, that's 14 and 2 thirds. So that's the biggest a data point can be in order to not be considered an outlier under our definition. And you can check our biggest data point is 13. So we don't have any outliers in the big direction. Let's check the small direction. So it's going to be x bar minus 2.5 mads. So that's going to be ace minus, well we already know 2.5 times the mean absolute deviation is 20 thirds, so we don't need to do that calculation again. That's going to be the same. So that's going to be, if you like, ace minus, well, 20 thirds is 6 and 2 thirds. So this ends up simplifying to 1 and one third. You could do this in improper fractions if you like as well, um, which might help you out seeing what's going on. So anything smaller than one and a third, which is 1.3 repeating, is an outlier. So the data point one is less than 1.3. So it is an outlier under this rule for mean absolute deviation to determine outliers. So that's kind of what's going on. It's too far away from our mean. So we know this diagram kind of says what's going on. So we have our mean right in the middle there. And 95% of the data is going to be within 
2.5, or should be within 2.5 mean absolute deviations of the mean, 2.5 mads of the mean. We had our point 0.1 over here, which is this guy, which is just outside our range, which we consider usual observations. This um, 1, which is more than 2.5 mads away, we're going to consider that unusual since it's outside, so this is our outlier. Everything else is inside, so 7 is here, this is 7, 8, 9, 10, and 13 is getting close, but it's still inside, so we're still going to consider it a usual observation. But this guy here, since it's outside our interval, we're going to consider it an outlier. So that's it, and that's another way of determining outliers. Rather than using a box plot, you can use this idea of mean absolute deviation.